I guess, post on here. And today, let's talk about how to get your six link at leak start. So I think we all know that feeling of uh, spamming or refusing at leak start. It can be very, very disheartening. Um, it can make you quit the league outright, but there is a lot of strategies to avoid this fucker up here. Now, when I did my leak start testing, a comment I got a lot was sort of, why are you not using a five link? It's a leak start scenario. So in this video, we're going to talk about exactly that, getting your first six link. There's going to be no orbit fusings involved. There's going to be no RNG involved. Uh, so strap in, get your popcorn. I don't know, fast your seatbelts. Let's start. And since I made a point about orbit fusings, I will give this a little bit more context. Number one, do not use a unique body armor for your leak start. Obviously, with the caveat that if you get your six link elsewhere, that's fine. But if you depend on a six link and you're using a body armor, you're basically shooting yourself in the foot and you make yourself vulnerable to RNG. And even if you don't, right? Even if you go for the 1,500 fusings, 100% of the time investment, Think about if that is actually worth the investment. Now at leak start, uh, all of your gear is basically up in the air. All of that can be improved like drastically, right? Every single gear slot you have could give you potentially damage, potentially survivability. So think about whether a thousand five hundred fusings is actually the right way to go instead of some of the other options we're going to talk about. Uh, now, obviously, this comes with a little bit of a caveat. If you're a soul mantle build, if you're a build that needs their body armor and their six link in their body armor. Um, only leak started if you can actually do it on a five link. Do not do POBs that actually revolve around six links. Uh, same with stuff like Tinker Skin, right? Um, do not make yourself too vulnerable to RNG. Better be overly cautious. Make it so hitting a six link is kind of like a bonus, but is not your number one uh, thing that you need to do. This is also important because we all know this weird feeling where you want to six link your body armor, right? And uh, now you have a five link, but then you're like, okay, so I have 300 fusing. Let's just try for a six link. And at the end, you're like, okay, so I'm not even getting back a five link. So now what am I supposed to do? Am I now going to run around with a four link, right? So it's just kind of a weird scenario. And just to cover this real quick, the worst defender, in my opinion, is Carcass Jack. I do not think Carcass Jack is worth going to a five link. A six link is usually huge. Now, there's some builds where it's not that huge. It's just like another 25% more damage. Uh, but unless you really, really need this AoE, uh, please think about this twice. You might as well get like an evasion armor chest with like spell suppress, a good life roll, uh, some more base armor, base evasion, right? Uh, we're going to talk all about it, but I think Carcass Jack for, is one of the worst offenders on that list. Next up, using a tabula is not a crime. Now, I know a lot of people like to use a five link, uh, get a little bit of stats on their body armor. I personally don't think uh, you can ever replace a tabby for a leak starter because usually you're going to be bleeding for damage. That's obviously a softcore perspective. If you're in hardcore, it's a lot different. Uh, but one, one thing I want to definitely say is some people do overstay their welcome with a tabby. So try replacing it before red maps. There's sort of a jump from yellow to red maps that is kind of huge. And uh, you should really be looking at getting a different six link, which we're going to talk about now. Uh, but basically, don't underestimate how much a base armor or like base evasion chest actually gives you. A flat thousand armor, a little bit of life, a little bit of spell suppression can go a long way. And tabbies actually do have quite decent resale value until like day four, uh, where most people are already in maps then. Uh, this is a really obvious one, so let's move on. And next up, let's talk about Corrupted Six Link, which are definitely huge at leak start, and I don't feel like enough people are uh, taking advantage of them. So there's a nice and cozy feeling in using a tabby because it has white sockets. You can experiment around. But if you're somebody who plans out their leak starts, uh, a Corrupted Six Link is absolutely insane. So at leak start, divines are worth basically nothing, and people are actually selling these, right? So... um. Other than this, right, you're not going to get this at leak start for 10 kilos, but you can get like a decent ish uh, corrupted six link for the same price as a tabby. And it can have stuff like a little bit of life, like, right? Regen can fix your resistances. Don't underestimate that, right? You also get like a 900 armor or something or evasion or energy shield if you're like ghost shield. There is a lot of value in just going for these. So basically just for knowing what your build needs and planning out your build, you're getting an upgrade from a tabby to a rare six link and sure it's not going to have the stats that you want right a corrupted six link that hits randomly hits spell suppression is going to be a little bit more expensive stuff like that you're not going to get t1 life right 
but you get something and that's something to upgrade from. Now, one downside of Corrupted Six Links is that if you don't know what you want, if you don't plan out your build and you're like, oh, I need to use a different color, it might be a little bit awkward simply because Vile Orbs are not that available at Leak Start. So I would say if you're somebody who's kind of like experimenting at Leak Start, um, don't do this. It might backfire, actually. Maybe losing the stats and going for Tabby is actually worth just having a more comfy, like... Uh, time to replace your gems um because also they do have kind of a bad resale value and that is simply because not many people might need exactly the same color combination as you do right um so they nobody might buy it for like half a day and having like 20 c invested into a uh, something that doesn't sell is kind of clunky at least start you really want to be liquid so um, yeah, that is the downside of it. But if you're somebody like me who plans out the leak start, uh, a corrupted six link is huge. Next up, six links through divination cards. This is something a lot of people actually do, but you might not know about all the options that you have. So let's go through some of them. Now, the most important things about six links from divination cards is if it doesn't specify any item level here, like for example, porcupine item level 50 or dapper prodigy item level 100, the maximum item level you can get is 80. And you also have to know that the item level of the character that you hand the divination cards in with matters. So for example, if you hand it in at an earlier level than 80, you're not going to get a level 80. You're going to get at whatever level you are at right now. Which if the divination card is not too expensive, actually doesn't matter that much. At Leak Start, you really only care about having something that has a little bit of base value. You can throw a Screaming Essence of Greed on, get some life, get some random stats um, to set up your character. So don't be too afraid if you, for example, get it at like level 75 or something. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, I just wanted to point it out. So Change That Bind is one of the ones I really, really like because they're usually kind of cheap for what you get. Now, you could get a really bad ar uh, body armor. You could get something huge, right? Um, it is what it is. It's kind of a lottery, but it's always going to be better than a tabby. And it's actually not that much more expensive than a tabby. You would be surprised. Last one from the future here. Something I forgot to mention with Chains That Bind is uh, it really depends on what kind of colors you need, how good it is, right? For a, a color combination like, I don't know, three red, two blue, one green, or even two blue, two green, two red, red, something in the middle, it's pretty damn easy that you, you could just hit it on whatever. But if you have something like five greens or five blues or five reds, uh, you're going to get a... a you could have a rough time if you get unlucky, right? For example, you get an armor base on a spellcaster. Now, all of a sudden, you have to get like four off colors. That's going to be rough, right? So definitely take this with a grain of salt. It very much depends on your build. Uh, but if it fits, Change That Bind can be a very, very cheap solution. Now, number two, there's also some very specific ones. Um, we're going to go through all of them, but most of them are not that relevant. Number two, Porcupine is only relevant if there's like kind of like a, a bow dot build usually. Um, these are like for, for bow dot builds that scale gem levels. Uh, then you have Dapper Prodigy. Uh, now, Six Link Body Armor. This one's item level 100. It's also random. This is something Solo Cephalon players really like because this is way easier to farm than you might think for how good it is. So I'd especially consider this if you're Solo Cephalon and you don't need like a specific base at Leak Start. Uh, Celestial Justicar, be sure to note that if you need um, colors, this is something I see a lot of. People are just like, oh, Astral Plays a really good base, and then they forget that they need different colors, right? They're not a melee build. If Usually, if you're not melee, you're not going to have that many red sockets. Uh, Astral Plate has a high strength requirement, so getting off colors is pretty damn hard, especially at Leak Start, where chromes are actually not that cheap. So just be careful and just be mindful. Um, uh, the Ethereal, Val Regalia. Now, this one's usually not that good because you actually want high item level on your Val Regalia to get a lot of energy shield going, right? A lot of the rolls are hidden behind I level 80 plus. And as it has no item level specified here, it can only get up to item level 80. But if you need your energy shield, um, you need it, right? Emperor of Purity. Uh, this is also something that's usually quite overlooked. These can be quite inexpensive. You can also farm them yourself. Uh, always look at the areas, right? On the wiki, you can actually see where you can target farm them, right? Um, now, this is only item level 60, which is not that relevant. Uh, one thing to note about um, Emperor of Purity and why I don't really like it is you cannot accidentally hit spell suppression because uh, a Holy Chainmail is an armor energy shield base. So that's just something to look out for. Uh, Boyer's Dream. I don't really know about people who are farming these, um, but I know I know some people who use them. It's basically just if you're a bow character, right? Um, Harbinger bow. Um, six link body armor. Uh, I don't really see people really using those. So let's hover over some of the less used ones. Uh, this gives you a, a level 100. Uh, this is a six link body armor. Now the influenced ones don't really do that much at leak start. Because um, usually if you need an influence, you need exactly one influence, right? So you can't really roll the dice with your 
um, divination card. Uh, you have a six link staff. These are usually quite inexpensive, but that's also because some of the staffs actually want a higher item level. So Dark Mage, usually not that great, but there are some builds where it's very good at. There's also Imperial Legacy, which needs 22 div cards. This can be pretty annoying to buy from the market. You have to trade 22 times, right? That's really annoying, but you do get a six link Imperial Bow and Imperial Bow is a, a pretty damn good base. Now, um, this is quite a new one, the White Knight. I don't really know much about it. Um, the Sacrifice is usually quite expensive to get a six link sac Sacrificial Garb. And then the Warlord, um, very few builds are actually gonna want a Coronal Maul. Now, some things you should know about getting a six link for divination cards is how expensive these are actually changes quite a bit from patch to patch if you're good at reading the meta if you know what's meta right um then this can be pretty good if you need something that not a lot of other people need um you could get to your six link very easily you could pay like 20 30 chaos and get like your semi end game chest right um or you could just fall flat because everybody wants porcupine cards right it is what it is um but also the strategy is very soul self found viable because all of these are farmable some are rarer than others i would definitely look at like reddit threads um like a lot of soul self found people share their experiences with farming stuff and so i don't know too much about the rarity of all of these uh but i just know that a lot of people go for those on soul self found then number five cheap six link uniques now this is something that i feel like a lot of people don't realize but there's actually quite a bit of uniques that are six linked and are pretty cheap and if you see those cheap six link uniques just know that nobody used orb fusings on them but the reason they are so cheap is they can drop from league mechanics the two that come to mind for me immediately are for example legion or metamorph encounters can actually straight up give you six link uniques but these random six links are rolled from how common they are so for example some of the really really common ones like for example a pillar of the caged god which is often like a build around unique for a league starter. Maybe not the most meta right now, but who knows, right? Um, those are usually the cheapest because they are like T4 uniques. Uh, they drop like candy and those are the most likely outcomes from these random rewards. But, and this is a trend in general, um, you have to read the meta because sometimes even some of these uh, more rare uniques are getting picked up by a lot of people. Somebody made a build guide around them and all of a sudden they're not that cheap anymore. But this one is a little bit more finicky. Uh, I'll let you play around with them. I'm just going to say that not all uniques are build around, right? Some of them are just generally okay and you might get an upgrade uh, to a tabula for basically the same price. This is obviously up to change because they can always reduce the drop rate. Uh, they can make it so they just take away that kind of reward altogether. It has happened in the past. Uh, but overall, as of this recording, cheap six link uniques are an option. Now then number six, bad base item six links that are non-corrupted. So these are basically items that aren't corrupted so you can color them, so you can quality them. Um, so you have a little bit more flexibility, but they're not like good items. And this is something that I always encounter is uh, people are way too laser focused at leak start to, for example, get their triumphant lamellar, right? Um, or get their like generals brigandine, whatever they need. Instead, you could get like a full worm scale for probably half the price. And the reason I make this a point is the base item doesn't matter that much at leak start, right? Like if we look at, for example, the difference between a full worm scale and a triumphant lamellar, it is a difference, right? But it's not like you're trying to make the perfect item. So uh, overall, if you can save like 50, 60, sometimes even more chaos uh, for just losing a little bit of armor and a little bit of evasion, that is usually worth it because you can invest it elsewhere and it's going to be better spent elsewhere. Now, I want to give a little bit more context to this because uh, there's some body armors that are going to be cheaper than others and some that are going to be more um, uh, something you want, right? Like evasion body armors are usually huge because of, they can roll spell suppression. That doesn't have to be just evasion. That can be evasion armor hybrid, evasion energy shield hybrid. And you don't have to even go for spell suppression, just the chance, the off chance that you can hit it. Spell suppression is just very, very premium. And without having it on your body armor, it can be hard uh, to get capped for some builds. Also a little bit of a sidetrack here, bad energy bases are usually extremely cheap. And the reason that is, is because energy shield builds unlike like armor and evasion builds are a lot more reliant on their body armor because unlike life builds they don't scale per level they actually have to scale from gear so if their body armor isn't like a va regalia and it gets downgraded to something else that is a pretty huge deal right uh, but if you're looking at some of the lower ones that basically nobody wants right like if we're looking in here you might not get much from this energy shield. Maybe you are a ghost shroud and you're just a, a little bit of energy is still, uh, sh energy shield is still something. 
but just being able to throw on a screaming essence of greed, get some life, get some resistances, uh, is still better than a tabby. That is if you can support the colors. Once again, colors are important at League Start because chromatics are not that cheap at League Start, right? Um, so last up here, I just wanted to point, uh, put this here real quick. Screaming essence of says of greed are actually huge so screaming essence of greed a lot of you guys already know this but it gives you uh on a body armor 90 to 99 max life which is kind of like i think t4 t3 ish which is really nice right you secure the most important role for most builds which is a life and then you maybe get a little bit of armor evasion resistances whatever you can build around it right and last but definitely not least for all the melee players out there six link melee weapons are usually easier to get than something like body armors or bows and the number one reason for that is they are more specific so less people need it some people are axes some people are swords some people are staves right some people use unique weapons whereas with bows there's just a lot of really good rares going around that's usually what people focus on there's not that many good uniques um, but usually six link melee weapons are way more diverse now something that is so important to point out with uh, weapons is you might save a lot if you go for a lower item level specifically if you go lower than i level 83 because i 83 is usually where you can roll t1 fizz but if you look at the waiting here realistically at league start tell me are you gonna hit it you're never gonna hit it don't focus yourself too much on eye level uh, focus on base right because base does actually matter obviously like flesh ripper void axe right there's a lot of uh despot x it depends right there's a lot of really good bases and that does matter but being able to roll for example a t1 um it's not never going to happen so don't pay like an extra 50 chaos at league start just to get that understand that your weapon is a stepping stone and treat it as such and invest your money where you're just more realistic to actually get a payoff for it and then something that getting a six link weapon also does is it leaves you open to a chaos heart which I feel like a lot of people underestimate. Uh, Chaos Heart is huge at leak start because a lot of builds are really starving for flat life. And that is because of the dy dynamic between flat life and percentage life usually. Percentage life you get from the passive tree, so it's kind of free. You're going to get it whenever you spec into it. But most flat life comes from like prefixes, right? From gear. So if at the at leak start you're not going to have the perfect gear, you sometimes will have to go for very specific stuff. Maybe you need chaos res on this, accuracy on this, right? Uh, you would rather go for LE damage with attacks. Uh, chaos hard makes your gearing a lot easier at the start. So if you have a six link weapon, you're not going to need any sockets in your body armor. Now, obviously that's not always true. Um, some builds are kind of socket starved even if they don't need a six link body armor they just need the sockets for something but i just feel like for the first days of a league chaos heart is kind of an underused uh, tool to get yourself through this hump of having shitty gear so in conclusion what can we take away from this video number one Overfusings are your enemy. If you're using a build that needs to spam overfusings on a unique or something, you better make sure that that build is worth it because you could blow up your leak start and it might get you to quit like a lot of people. Uh, so be sure that it's actually worth it to put yourself through that. And something like a carcass check, definitely not worth to do that. Now, number two, plan your six link colors and acquisition. And what I mean by that is knowing your colors can open you uh, a lot of options, right? Like certain divination cards are only possible if you know your colors, right? If your colors are easy on basically everything, you can go for chains that bind. Uh, if you have a lot of red sockets, you can go for an astral plate, right? Uh, through uh, divination cards. Uh, if you know that beforehand, not only can you do that, but you can also go for specific corrupted six links. Uh, so knowing your colors beforehand can do a lot for you and then just plan out your acquisition uh, accordingly. And last but definitely not least is know the meta everything we set up to this point is completely up for debate i cannot predict the future it depends on what people actually want to play so if you're somebody who's a lot on twitch on youtube on reddit you're going to be ahead of the curve and you're actually going to know uh, what to do and if for example like a build that everybody wants to play has a certain amount of like has a, has a certain base armor that you want as well or even like a unique that you want as well uh you can kind of maybe make a plan b around it or maybe even pivot your build completely that doesn't only go for six links but i just wanted to include it overall i hope this video could help you out maybe i could give you some inspiration one thing i want to make sure you take away from this is that um, understanding where you get the six link from is super important because you can't just throw in a six link tinker skin at league start and then on day two you're like um okay so now i only have a five link because 
how did I actually want to get that, right? You're not going to spam or refusings. It is the worst, right? You could be completely destroyed by RNG. You're sitting there and you're like, why did I plant this on a six link? Maybe it doesn't have enough damage on a five link. So make sure that is not something that can make you rage quit the league but with that being said uh, i hope you liked the video and uh, see you next time but that's it for the video if you liked it give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribe as always a huge shout out to my twitch subscribers and my patreons i couldn't do videos like this without you thank you so much for the support but yeah uh, i hope i could save some people's league start maybe because they're not gonna rage quit because they don't hit their six link uh don't use over fusings um, try to work around that in some kind of fashion. If your build doesn't allow that, be sure that you can work on a five link for a long time because uh, sometimes you just don't get lucky and some people might have a hard time to actually farm up like 1,500 fusings at leak start. Uh, but yeah, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.